Hello, and welcome to the In the Word podcast. This is the podcast that will help you to understand God's Word, build a stronger relationship with God, and develop habits that will help you love God and others better. And now, here's your host, Trevor Pope. Hey, what's going on, guys? I pray all of you guys out there are doing well. I just want to say thank you for joining me this week on this podcast episode. I know that there's just been a lot of different things going on. You know, I see a lot of talk about what happened at the Capitol. Um, You know, a lot of people are discouraged, uh, some encouraged, you know, those that, you know, wanted to see that happen. But a lot of mixed emotions on what went on with, you know, the people storming the Capitol and people losing their lives and things of that nature. And I've been talking to you guys a lot about, you know, just the way the times are. And we we obviously know what the scripture says about the end times. And a lot of things we are seeing unfold right before our very eyes. A lot of things that we've probably seen in the last five years whether that's in our individual lives or as a world as a whole, or if you live in the United States, you know, as a whole, you know, we've seen a lot of things that we quote unquote have never seen before, you know? So, you know, it's just showing us that things are definitely getting a lot crazier, unfortunately. And no, I I don't even want to say unfortunately, really fortunately, because God says that, you know, this is what's going to happen. According to scripture, these things are going to happen a lot of crazy things are going to pop off. Bad times are going to come. The love of many is going to wax cold. All of these different things that the scripture talks about, we're seeing in so many different various forms. And with seeing all of that, um, you know, you see how discouraging for some people it is, especially those that are hopeful that things will change and turn around for the good and stuff like that, you can just kind of see, you know, they're just at a loss. You know, they're like, man, what's what's going on out here? Especially those that don't know the Lord and don't know the scriptures. They're like, listen, why is my family members raising up on me? Why is friends raising up on me? Why is everybody going crazy? Why is everybody so angry? Why is there so much racial tension? Why is there so much, you know, economy problems? You know, why why are there so many people starving, you know, way more than what it used to be? You know, we used to see people like just out on the street asking for money, sleeping on the street. And we kind of just focused on them as, you know, when it came to poverty and, and not having food to eat. But now we see that, you know, hitting even closer to home to people that were doing okay just a year ago and that may be living in their cars. And that, and that's not nothing new to happen, but we've seen, we're seeing it now at a, at a larger rate, you know, we're seeing more and more people out of a house and home, more and more people on welfare from all cultures, more and more people, you know, scraping and scrapping just for a little of something to eat. You know, it's just really a lot going on. And, you know, I get the discouragement, but at the same time, those of us that are saved, we should be encouraged, you know, because we see the scriptures unfolding in front of us right before our very eyes. And it's not to say that these are things that we want to see happen. We all want to see uh, great days and everybody happy, everybody getting along. But unfortunately, you know, According to the word, that's something that we're not going to see, you know, happen ever again when it comes to just society as a whole. And even though that sounds daunting, once again, it it isn't for those of us that are saved and those of us that are waiting on the Lord. And we know what Revelations talks about, about the new earth, you know. And things of that nature, that's a that's a blessing for us because we know the scripture says that when God creates, when it when the new earth comes down out of heaven, that God will he's going to dwell there with his people. So we no longer going to have to communicate with God, you know, through the spirit and kind of reference him to him being up there or up in heaven. But the scripture says that he's going to be right there among the people and and what a day that's going to be. But, you know, even now, 
you know, I always hear a friend of mine, he always says, listen, this is a great time to be alive, even though we're going to see some things that we don't necessarily like. It is a great time to be alive if you are saved. But, you know, I get the discouragement. I get the heartache. I get the pain. I, I get those of you that just want to see things get better and they just don't seem to be getting better. We may have some individual victories in our lives because the Lord is going to do that for us. He's going to give us some individual victories, but we're all go. We're also going to have some individual trials and some are going to feel heavier than others, you know, but at the same time, we just got to continue to keep our faith and trust in the Lord. So, you know, I said all that to say that I know some of you guys out there by a lot of things you're seeing in your own personal life, you know, maybe what you saw go on at the Capitol, maybe just some things you see going on just in the world in general, you know, it may you know, it may have you down a little bit, but I'm here to tell you to be encouraged that God has it under control. Excuse me, I'm having a little coffee there. So if you hear me stop and, and take a little sip, that's just me having a little coffee. I just really wanted to just sit back today, have a little coffee and relax and just really talk to you guys because I get it. I understand. I was just having a conversation with a young lady at the rental place. Um, the car rental place. And we just were talking about, you know, just, you know, just how, how life is and, and how sometimes there's so many different things that hit you in life. But at the end of the day, man, you just got to kind of allow it to just, you know, go over your head, be, you know, like a, a water off a duck's back, you know, just, you know, you can't allow it to sit on you. You can't allow it to just hang over you because when you do, it just seems like, you know, things just get worse and worse and you you feel even more down. And me being transparent, you know, I I try to encourage people, listen, I've gotten to a place where I try my best to not allow things to bother me. Yes, they, you know, they may be alarming to me. They may get my attention, you know, definitely may pray about them, but I try my best not to really allow it to cause me to panic or be discouraged or be down. I mean, even with the COVID uh, hitting, you know, yes, you know, it was discouraging. It was crazy to see, but, you know, I worked all the way through it. I, I didn't panic about it. You know, I knew it was real. I, I, I know people that have passed away. Obviously, you know, I talked with you guys before my wife works in the hospital. So she's seen a bunch of people pass away, you know, but just with everything going on, I try not to and still try not to let it bother me. You know, I'm just only thing I can do is really live my life and trust the Lord. And even, you know, when I shared the COVID-19 testimony with you guys, for those of you that have never heard that, if you look up in a couple of seconds, I'll post up a link where you can uh, tap on that and go see uh, or go hear the testimony that I told about a lady that I know that I'm pretty much in charge of her affairs. You know, when it comes to her getting medical treatment and getting help, you know, she asked me to do this for her years ago before she began to lose her mind. So she's been in a nursing home for quite a while because she can't she can no longer function and live on her own. But basically she got the virus and just all of the things that came with that, just dealing with the nursing home and basically being asked to, you know, put her in hospice instead of having that opportunity to pray and things of that nature. Like even in the midst of that, I just saw how God worked things out, even though I, I saw people that had passed away and things of that nature. And obviously if she had passed away and that was the Lord's will for her to pass away, there, that was nothing I would have been able to do about that. But what I tried to do, and it was only the grace of God and him giving me the strength was I tried not to panic and really just be patient. You know, as the scripture says, you know, I try not to lean on to, onto my own understanding because here they are telling me, listen, you know, it's crazy in here. People are dying. I think like 37 patients died in the building. And it's like, she just got sick a couple of days ago. And it's like, you know, put her on hospice and, you know, we'll make it comfortable for, it. but I'm like, listen, we haven't had an opportunity to pray. You know, it's only been a couple of days. Let's see, you know, let's see what's going on. But, you know, 
you know, when I, I'm just just when you get a chance, I'm, you'll see it right now. Um, you can go and check it out and come back if you would like, or just wait until the end of this podcast episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to uh, see that link up there where you can click on it or see it at the end of the video. But if you're not on YouTube and you're listening through iTunes or Google uh, Podcasts or wherever you're listening from, if you come on YouTube, you can just type in Trevor Pope COVID-19 testimony and it'll just tell you the whole story you know, that went on when it came to her and everything that we both had went through in that process. But I said all that to say that, like, I get it. You know, there's times that life can be, you know, very strenuous for me as well. I think sometimes people see me, um, you know, being a preacher, preaching the word, constantly and encouraging other people. I think sometimes they forget that I go through my own trials and I, I need encouragement at times, you know, and sometimes when things hit me, you know, you don't always know who you can turn to, to get that encouragement from, because you don't want to always hear those cliche things, you know, those, those cliche sayings, if you will. And, you know, I'm an, I'm the type of person also that I don't want to necessarily talk to somebody that's going to just agree with me, you know, for the sake of agreeing, of agreeing with me, you know, for, for the sake of being on my side, you know, I, I want to talk to somebody that's going to give me both sides of what it is I'm dealing with, you know, in that moment. So there are times that things can be very stressful for me as well. And, you know, it'd be some days that, you know, like I said, like that Job situation, you feel a little bit of grief, but in the midst of it, you have to remember where you came from, where God brought you from and, and find that worship down on the inside, find that worship through his spirit and, and, and worship him and, and, and listen to his word and say some words of prayer as many as you can. If you know, if you're feeling down like that, because I'm telling you as a preacher, I I remember years ago, and this was something that I never necessarily ever thought I would be doing, or when I got into the church, thought I would be doing. I, I never looked at preachers, you know, I saw they had the the fabulous lives. They were like the movie stars up there, everybody, you know, moving to their beck and call and all of these different things. But I never saw that as something for me. I think because of some of those things, I was like, ah, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's something I would you know, necessarily want to do. And then obviously I understood according to the scriptures, you can't do that anyway, or you shouldn't be doing that anyway, unless you are called. So I I never was impressed necessarily by the preaching or the lifestyle of the preachers or the influence of the preachers. You know, it was, it just was what it was. It's like, okay, this is the person that is is giving out the word, you know, the, they may be the pastor or the bishop of the church. And, you know, they got all of these people, you know, that they are helping. And obviously these people are helping them, but unfortunately you have some that, you know, they're not necessarily helping the people. They're just being helped or taking advantage of the people. And, you know, even seeing that I'm like, man, that's, I I don't want any parts of that. I came from the streets. I came from selling drugs and hustling and doing all these things. So I know what hustling looks like. You know, I know what selling something to somebody looks like. So I'm like, you know, I don't want any parts of that. But lo and behold, you know, the Lord did call me to preach his word, you know, to be, you know, one that that, you know, shares the gospel, preaches the gospel, encourages his people, you know, equipping them, helping them to get to the place where he would want them to be. And I remember him calling me into the ministry and, and, and putting that calling on my life. And I remember, you know, there was a a brother in the church that, you know, because he, he was, a I think he had become a minister at this time, but I think he ended up being a deacon and then a minister, but I never, you know, had the opportunity to be a deacon. I went straight from, you know, just being in the congregation to being a minister. And I remember him saying something like, yo, you didn't even, you wasn't even a deacon before, you know, even though, you know, it's not like you have to be that, but I understood what he was trying to say, but it just went to show you like that was something for me that wasn't expected. But what I find, and I said all that to get to this point, what I find is that 
I don't think people understand. You know, some may that that have the calling. I I don't think people understand sometimes how hard it is to be called to preach God's word. But also in this day and age with all of the things you see. And like I said, even looking at other preachers lives and all that, like really trying to maintain a lifestyle of doing things in an honest way, you know, and, and what do I mean by that? You know, a lot of times when people see that I'm, I'm preaching or, you know, that I've, I've been preaching for a while or that they see me with the YouTube channel and the subscribers, they automatically think that I'm making like a ton of money. And that's not true. Obviously, you monetize off of YouTube, which I get paid uh, money every month just for the monetization purposes. But it's not a whole lot of money. But there's this assumption among people that I'm making all of this this money, whether it's off of YouTube or just preaching alone. Like when people hear that you preach, they just automatically think about all the other preachers they know that have all of this money and that are doing all these things and driving these nice cars. And I'm like, that's not my life. You know what I mean? I still work, you know, uh, I'm, 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 I'm working, you know, several, I, I do several different things for work. Like as far as driving, I do like delivery stuff, like little contracts for delivery, um, food and different things like that media stuff. Um, also, you know, obviously with the podcast and doing those types of things, but you know, I'm not making a whole lot of money at all. I'm thankful for what God has done for me, but according to what people probably think I should be making or believe that I should be making, I am not making that. And, you know, and I'm just really being transparent because, you know, these are things that I don't always necessarily share with a lot of people or with, with many people at all. But I'm sharing this because I want you guys to understand that you're not the only ones that go through and deal with things, you know, and, you know, that sometimes sit and be like, wow, Lord, you know, I wish you would open this door for me or do that for me. Because what I find is that as a preacher, a husband, a father, now a grandfather, I'm actually going to see my granddaughter uh, tomorrow for the first time. My mother and I are going to be heading down to Virginia. You know, I'm a 44 year old grandfather, my daughter. She had a she had a daughter, so I'm going to see little Brooklyn um, tomorrow. Will be my first time seeing her, you know, because my daughter's about seven hours away. So it's kind of hard. And with the COVID thing, and with the kids being out of school, it's just been tough to get down there. So finally, by the grace of God, we'll be getting down there. So with all of these types of different hats on, you know, striving to try to live an upright life by the grace of God and through His power trying to do things the right way, not take advantage of the people, you know, but still not be where you want to be, whether that's financially and just or in just in certain areas, sometimes it's difficult because I feel like if it was just me, if 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 I my only responsibility was me, a lot of things I really wouldn't be worried about. You know what I mean? I probably could live in a one bedroom apartment, do my videos, go to church, do what I got to do there and be fine. But because I have all of these other responsibilities and I'm tied to all of these different individuals, whether that's family, whether that's friends that need my help at times, um, you know, whatever, whatever have you. Sometimes it's difficult because sometimes I feel like people, they expect so much from you. Not understanding that, listen, I'm just, I'm just human. I'm just, I'm just trying to do the Lord's work. Something that I never thought that I would do. Um, y'all got to excuse me. I'm trying to. Mm, y'all got to excuse me. Um, because I, I, I don't think. I don't think people understand how in this society to do the Lord's work and try your best to do it the right way and still be looked upon and, and, and by people be expected to do so much. You know, you got individuals that may feel like I'm not helping them enough. 
you know, there's individuals that's around that feel like there's things that they should have have had already that that because of I because I don't maybe make what these other preachers make or you know, they see these lifestyles, they they feel like, you know, I just don't want to do these things for them. And it's like it's like listen, all of y'all, my my friends, my family, just all of you out there, all of, all of my loved ones, I I want to help you as best as I can. If I can give you everything that you ever wanted, that I that I believe would not take you outside of the Lord's will, I would, you know. But me being who God called me to be, me seeing people taking advantage of all the time and things of that nature. I just want to do things the right way. You know, I, I want to be able to, if God increases my income or if my income increases, you know, and this is not just about money. I'm just using that as an example, because like I said, God has blessed me to be able to do this YouTube thing and work and make money working and 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 do pretty good with it. You know, I haven't missed a meal, haven't missed working through the pandemic or whatever. So I'm not saying like I'm not working or, you know, that I'm not making any income. My wife works, you know, things of that nature. But definitely nothing compared to probably what we see a lot of people that do the same thing as I do make. And not that, understand, not that I'm comparing what I make to them because if that was the case, then I would just do what they were doing to get what they got. So that's not my dilemma. My dilemma is I just want to do things the right way. I am striving to do things the right way and waiting for God to open the proper doors so that I can be more of a blessing to some of the people in the financial area that I can. Because, it, you know, unfortunately, what happens is when people know you or when there's things that people desire to have here and then they're not bad things, they're not negative things. You know, when you talk to them, like I said, me understanding the scriptures, me understanding life. And it's not that they don't understand. It's like some of these things, you know, when you get these things, once you have them for a while, you're going to realize it's not really a big deal. And how many of us know that? Like, think about something you always wanted. And then when you get it after having it six months or so, it's like, you know, it's like no big deal now because you finally have it. And, you know, when I'm trying to explain that to certain individuals, because I don't have the capacity to get that certain thing that I'm telling them about that is not that serious, it's more taken like, oh, you're just saying that because you can't afford that or you're, you're not able to do that. And it's like, no, I'm telling you, if I had... The, you know, the resources to do this for you, whether that's friend, family, whoever, it's like, listen, I would be telling you this same thing. And, you know, these are the types of things that I go through, you know, just being a preacher, being a minister of God's word is like, you know, you, you deal with that side of things you deal with when you make a mistake, you know, oh, I thought you were supposed to be like you deal with all of these things. And listen, I get it. I understand, you know, there's all through the Bible, you know, situations where people, you know, they didn't always get it right. They, they messed up and they repented and things of that nature. And I'm not even talking about me out here doing anything crazy, cheating, wilding, doing none of that type of stuff. It could be just small things. You know what I mean? Um, it could be me, um, you know, losing my cool. It could be, you know, me just not necessarily handling something uh, as, as quickly as I should have. And maybe it affected somebody else or, you know, maybe I couldn't handle that be, because my hands was tied. Like it's, it's not even nothing really that serious. But like I said, when you have uh, uh, this calling on your life and even when you're just saved, you know, it's like people expect so much from you. And I just wanted to be transparent with you guys out there that feel sometimes that heavy burden of you trying you know, like you're trying to do for people as much as you can. You want them to have everything they possibly w would love to have. And like I said, this is not only talking about monetary or material things. This is just, you know, even 
from a standpoint of, you know, there's people that that wish I could call them all the time, reach out to them all the time, family, friends, people that I met in the church that don't go to the church no more, like all of these things. But I'm only one person and I'm trying my best. I feel at times to please everybody. And I know somebody's going to comment, well, you can't please. I know. I know all of that. Understand. I know all of that. And and that's why I'm saying this. I, I know I can't. And that's why I just do my best to do what I can. I meant even if it's as simple as somebody that's close to me that just want to play a little game on the phone just to give them that time. You know what I mean? That, you know, just like whatever it is, you understand what I'm saying? Like I want everybody that I'm connected to, to be happy. I want to help them the best way I can. I try to help them the best way I can. Anybody hit me up. They need some food. They need a little bit of money, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm there by the grace of God. I'm there. You know, if I can do it, I do it most of the times. God has put me in this position where I can help them somewhat, not always as much as they would like. And you know what? I would love to help them as much as they would like, but I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to get a lot of these individuals to understand that, listen, as God goes, I go, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing anything as to where that I, that I know of as to where I'm trying to stop whatever it is God has for my life, whatever it is that God wants to do in my life. I'm 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 in I, I am in no way, shape or form trying to hinder that. I, I, I want to make some more income so I can help other people out. You know, there's a ton of people that I know need help. I would love for some of these contracts and things that I'm doing, you know, I would love to have my own contracts, my own driving contracts, a couple vans where, you know, I can give some brothers I know jobs that came from the same place I came from. But listen, that's all according to the Lord's will for my life. It's not like I'm doing anything to stop that. I'm open. I'm here. I'm 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 working towards that. I'm being consistent. There's a couple other things that God has asked me and, 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 and call me to do that I'm working on. And, but, you know, just having all of these different responsibilities, it's like, you got to chip away at everything slowly, but surely, but I just wanted to be transparent guys. I, 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 I hate that I got a little emotional, but I'm telling you, sometimes I feel like I'm being pulled in so many different directions, you know, whether that's financially, whether that's family wise, whether that's church wise, you know, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of stuff in the church like I used to. I, I've been at the church that I'm at now. I think I've been near what? Uh, this is 2021. So in the summertime, it would be 19 years that I've been near. And I don't do a lot of the ministerial duties that I used to and things of that nature. And and I feel that burden from that. I feel that some people feel a type of way about that. You know, they're not going to say it to me, but they feel. And I'm like, listen, I'm working by the grace of God back towards that. But I got all of these other things going on. Like I'm trying, I'm striving to put God's word out and encourage as many people as I can and keep, you know, and, and, and keep myself at peace and with joy in the Lord. And it's like when I try to explain that to certain people, it's almost as if like either they don't understand or they don't care. And it's like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I just I just wanted to be transparent. I just I just wanted to just let you guys know that God is able. God is keeping me. God has kept me all this time. And by his grace, I haven't done anything to put myself in a position you know, because of finances or be, you know, I've, I've had in the past when I used to go out and do music and go out and preach, I had preachers come to me and say, yo, if you come to my church, I'm going to make you this. And they probably would have gave me an income and all by the grace of God. I don't care about none of that. I am not against in no way, shape or form having finances. I've never had a problem with anybody having finances. My thing is, is that when I see preachers businessmen, whoever, it's not even only in the church. When I see them getting over on the people to live this type of lifestyle, that's the thing I have a problem with. The Bible never said that money is the root of all evil. The Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. So even, even in those conversations, guys, when I have money conversations with people, I almost feel like I'm discouraging them, you know, because I'm trying to tell them, listen, 
I'm with you. I'm, I'm with the pay increase. I'm with you. Like if God opened the door, praise the Lord. But listen, we can't constantly focus on that. You know what I mean? We got to at least learn how to be content, you know, with what we have and, and whatever else come is a cherry on top, you know, but sometimes when I have conversations with people about money, about whether they get a large lump sum of money, it's like, listen, try to maintain the same lifestyle you've been maintaining. Don't go out there and get no crazy car and this and that. And now you back to where you was before. Like I try to get give people wisdom and have conversations with them. But like I said, once again, when you don't necessarily have what you're trying to explain, it's like they act like you don't have the wisdom or the knowledge to build with them on that. And so I, I, I guys, listen, I'm telling you, sometimes things is rough, you know, f- for me. And, 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 you know, I hate, I hate that this kind of turned into my type of, you know, me kind of just expressing myself and putting out there on you guys, what some of the things I go through, but I want, I want to though. I want, I want to be transparent. Now I want you guys to know and understand that we as preachers, you know, everybody's not trying to get over and it's not sweet. Like being a preacher, of the word and striving to do it the way the Lord wants you to do it. It's not sweet. Everybody is not happy with you. Listen, I could easily, if God didn't take my life, if he didn't kill me for this, I could, I could easily, and I'm not saying that he would, but I could easily increase my income. I could easily increase my YouTube views. All I got to do is get up here every day and say what God is getting ready to do for somebody. And the door is getting ready to open and watch what the Lord is going to do in 30 days. Give me that seed that, I mean, listen, I, I've seen the best of them do it, but what, what's the point of me? Getting a whole bunch of money, living some crazy lifestyle, and the people are still sick. They still don't have what they need to be a blessing to them. They still don't have what they need, you know, to equip them for the work that God has given them. What 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 point is it? What what like, you know, for me to ride around in something real crazy and live in something real big, and yet th- this person is still starving spiritually and physically. I, and it never made sense to me how, you know. We could be in a church full of people, and I'm not necessarily talking about my church personally, and unless that's what's going on. But I'm just saying in general, if 200 of 200 of us is sitting in church together, nobody in there should be without food. You know what I mean? Like we should all be able to take two dollars each out of our pocket and give them, help them get some groceries for that week and figure it out the next week. Like like nobody should be starving no nobody should be down you know even if that meant me being a pastor you know if if I was pastoring the church even if that meant me coming down on my salary to make sure you know to help in individuals as much as I can I mean you can't you can't give everybody everything because guess what you're going to have some people that are going to come and try to get over but God gives you wisdom on how to deal with that we see that through the Bible you know we know when somebody's trying to get over and they're not and they're not doing right with the help that they've been given but I'm like, what is the point of me living this extravagant lifestyle? And that's not even something that I'm looking for. I, man, I just want to be able to be comfortable and be able to, when somebody pop up, whether that's within my house, whether that's, you know, outside family, outside friends, to just be able to take care of of situations if or or if they need a job to be able to bring them into something that possibly you know if it's the Lord's will that I possibly am running it on and can you know give them some work to do type of thing like you know so it's not even all about no extravagant 14 million this and for it's not even about that nowhere near that but you know it's just crazy how you know, people don't understand how hard it is, especially in this day and time and trying to be a preacher that's doing the right thing. When everything around you is screaming, yo, you should be, you know, you should be living better than that or you should be doing better than that. Look at these individuals that don't care about the people and and look at how they're living. Like when you hear all of this screaming, when you when you hear voices 
pretty much kind of telling you, listen, you need to tone it down. If you don't go so hard, you'll sell more records. If you don't go so hard, you'll get more views. Like that's a tough thing, especially when you know that there's people around you that desire certain things that at this point you can't necessarily get for them. And it's not even necessarily big things. You understand like that? It's no joke, but I remember a preacher told me years ago when I first started preaching, and it, and this is really, at times, it really is true, and this is just me being transparent. He said that being a preacher, there's going to be times, a lot of times, that you're going to feel alone, and he, and he never lied. There's many a days that I feel alone. There's many a days that I feel like I can't pick up the phone and always call somebody and talk to somebody about what I'm going through. Maybe there's a couple brothers that I can here and there, but a lot of times you just feel alone, you know, because of certain things you understand about this world, certain things you see about this world, certain things that you see that it's not even worth getting into in this world. But yet when you express these things, you know, people don't want to hear it. And I understand that. That's that's just biblical. We see that all through the Bible. So I can deal with that. But when you're carrying so many different things and you see so many different things coming and happening that you can't necessarily just talk to friends and family about because you're going to almost or not almost you're going to discourage them because they want to live their best. No, I don't. I don't. Let me let me rephrase. That. I don't want to say they want to live their best life here, but they want to live a really good life here. And I and you know what? I don't think that's necessarily bad in itself. But the other side of that is there's a possibility that that lifestyle that you vision, you're not going to be able to live here. You know, yes, you can chase certain things to get you to that lifestyle. But what if that causes you to fall on the other line of or fall on that other side of, of what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? That's where that thin line is. Yes, the Bible is clear. Being diligent and going hard will open up certain doors. But can you handle it? And that's what if you notice a lot of times when you look at people in ministry, you see that they started out going hard for the word, preaching the word hard. But when certain doors open and when they when they were exposed to certain things, when they started to live certain lifestyles, they were afraid to say what they had to say now in fear of losing that lifestyle. I've heard it said before, and I know it's to be true, even though it may have never happened to me. But I remember a guy said, a motivational speaker said, listen, it's one thing to be poor and to deal with being poor and not hardly having. But if you ever become rich or have a whole lot of money and have to come back to being poor, that's that 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 does something to you. That that's one of the most devastating things that you can possibly go through. And and I believe it. That has never happened to me, but I, I know that has to be true. And we see that with, with the way the world is now and people that live certain lifestyles that have committed suicide and 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 went in places and shot places up and all these different things because their lifestyle changed from what they knew. So I know it to be true, but it's like, listen. That's not what life is all about. And once again, I am not against getting whatever it is you can afford. My thing is, is only time, once again, and I'll say it again, only time I have a problem with people buying certain things and material things and all that is if you didn't get it dishonestly, if you got it off the back of the people. Like I said, I don't care. And I've seen it in business. I've worked at places where I've seen people get over on the customers. I used to deliver for a company that sold heating and cooling stuff. And I knew they was getting over on the customers. Well, the contractors were that I was delivering to. I knew they was upcharging the customers. So a lot of times we get on preachers and all that in the church, but this happens all over the world every single day. The people that's pointing and saying, oh, y'all not doing right. Look at what you're doing with the money. They're doing the same thing in their businesses. They're doing the same thing to their employees. They're making all this money every year when they could chip off a hundred thousand off of their salary and bump up everybody in the company five, six dollars an hour. What that's going to hurt you. You can't take all that money with you, but yet and still they don't do it. So it's nothing wrong with having money. I just want to make that clear because I know sometimes people comment, oh, this, that, we know what the scripture says. For the love of it, for the worship of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So we're not talking about that. We're just talking about when people are just doing whatever it is 
to get to a certain lifestyle, no matter who they hurt, no matter who they use, like that is not cool. And that's what I went through in the street. That's what I saw my whole time in the street. So I refuse to be saved and do it. And then when God called me to be a preacher and, and, and a man of God to spread the word, I refuse to do it now. So whatever God has for my life, whether that's physically, financially, spiritually, whatever, that's I'm here for it. You know, I'm not against anything that God wants to do in my life that may cause me to increase in any of those areas. But I just don't want to increase in those areas off the back of somebody else or taking advantage of somebody else. And like I said, guys, at all times, I'm being pulled in so many different directions and 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 it's fine because I, I find my strength and my joy in the Lord. I'm just vent. I'm just venting right now. I'm just letting you guys know. I I wanted to be transparent with you guys because you guys been rocking with me, listening to the word. We've been striving to follow the scriptures and and like Peter said, follow me as I follow the Lord. Like we we we're striving to get home. That's our goal. Our goal is to get home. We're just pilgrims passing through. So as your brother in Christ, even though you may sit and, and listen to me spread, you know, uh, share the gospel, you know, give you the word. Listen, I'm your brother in Christ. I wanted to be transparent with you today to help you to understand that you're not the only one that go through. You're not the only one that feel like you're being pulled in so many different directions. And for the people around you that's pulling to not understand that, listen, if I had it, I'd give it to you. If I could do it for you, I would. I, I want to sit back and watch all y'all giggle and have a good time. I, I, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting on the Lord and whatever he has for me is for me. You know, and, 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 and that's not only being pulled financially, that's being pulled spiritually, that's being pulled mentally, physically. Sometimes it's very tiring, but, you know, early on, early on, you know, I think with me losing my mind and God bringing me, bringing my mind back, because I had literally lost my mind, I had went crazy with God bringing me back, I, early on in my salvation that process that God allowed me to go through, and I'm getting ready to stop, but that process that God allowed me to go through, um, just losing my mind and walking from one side of the city I lived into the other, crying and walking in businesses and, you know, just, just crazy. <laughs> trying to do and by him bringing me from such a dark place I understood from the beginning that nobody's going to be here for me like God when everybody turned their back on me not everybody because there was some people like my mom was praying and a couple of my friends but when people just had wrote me off and was like he's done he ain't never coming back God was there you know, my mom's church, they, they I found scriptures in my old room where she was they was touching the grave with her. Uh, First Baptist in Stratford, shout out to them. I love them for them touching the grave with my mother in one of her hardest times and seeing her son lose his mind and go crazy and just act wild. <laughs> like like you know, like God there was nobody there but him. So when I got saved and my mind got healed, I made up in my mind that no matter what, I'm not leaving God and I know that he's not leaving me. So no matter who come, no matter who go, no matter who do whatever they do, I'm not leaving God and I'm not allowing these things in this world to discourage me and cause me to get off the path that God has put me on. And that's my that's my ultimate message to you guys and I'm closing that's my ultimate message to you I don't care what nobody in this world say I don't care what no rappers say I don't care about what no actors say 
I don't care about what the president say, the vice president say, the 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 former former vice president and president say, the former former president. I don't care what nobody say, no preacher, no nothing. Don't allow anyone to cause you to break that connection that you have with God. Like John 15 said, if you abide in him, he shall abide in you. That word abide means to remain. Stay with God. I know I am. Yes, sometimes things feel heavy, but I I constantly cast that burden on the Lord. Like I said, I'm just venting today because I felt like somebody needed this. I I wanted somebody to know I, I'm not invincible either. I'm standing on the word strong. I'm standing on God's word and believing his word. I don't always make the right decisions. I don't always do the right things. But I, what, I, what I do by the grace of God every day is I stand on his word and I know that without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is real and that Jesus changed my life and that the word of God is absolutely the word of God and that it is the only way that Jesus is the only way to the father. Jesus is the only way to eternal life. Those are the things I stand on strong and that I will never hop off of. And that is what's going to help me to get home. The goal guys is to get home. That is the ultimate goal for you and your loved ones to get home. This is not our home. We're just pilgrims passing through. We don't belong here. That's why we feel the way we feel here. That's why I feel the way I feel here. That's why the things here, they don't affect me like they used to. They don't they don't sit on my mind like they used to, whether I get it, whether I don't, it's not the same as how I felt 20 years ago. That's because this is not my home. This is not my final destination and it's not yours either. Guys, continue to be encouraged. Continue to pray for me as I pray for you. Continue to just give God the glory no matter what this dark world say, no matter what the people say in it. Who cares? God is faithful. Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray that this helped somebody. Like I said, I apologize. It's the first time I've ever... I, well, I don't apologize, but... This is the first time that I've ever gotten emotional on any video that I've ever done. But these things were sitting on my heart and just, you know, and this is this is ever since I've been saved, especially ever since God has called me into the ministry. So this isn't just something that just started happening recently, 2020, 2021. No, this is how it's always been. So throughout all my preaching, people seeing me go forward and all that, these are the things that I have to deal with. The, the attacks and all of the different things that you have to deal with spiritually and all of that, especially trying to do it the right way to your best ability, it's no joke. And these are things that you can't share with everybody. So I just wanted to be transparent to let you know that if God is keeping me through all of this, he's going to continue to keep you. We're on the right path. We're headed home. We just have to endure until the end. I love you guys. And until the next time we hop on the podcast together, Shalom.